In this video we're going to look at some options on the annotation property page that help us to assess a peak model that has been created on data such as these. If we add a residual and then just adjust the display so we can see clearly that the residual is reasonably flat and the residual standard deviation is close to unity. So you might conclude that these data are well represented by a set of peaks. However, if we examine these peaks in more detail, we'll see that these peaks are probably not appropriate for these data. And the one in particular that is a problem is this small peak here. And this peak seems to be very narrow. So the function of the annotation quantification option is that we can create quantification tables that allow us to visualize different pieces of information. And in particular, I want to see the full width half maximum and I'm going to use profile format this is a new option and if I press apply here I end up with a table that if I then adjust the table position I can see that I've got a set of components and the full width half maxima for each of these components are reasonably similar perhaps but the one that really stands out is a value of 0 0.44 and this is the peak that we see here and the reason we know this is doubtful is because the operating mode for this instrument is a pass energy resolution of 20 and the width of the entrance aperture and the arrangement of detectors is such that we would not expect a carbon 1s peak to be produced from this instrument with a resolution of 0.44 for the full width half maximum. So this means it is taking up a shape within the data that is non-physical and we cannot rely on the binding energy of this peak to infer any kind of chemical state. There are two options for generating these profile reports and one says both in profile format and the other one is both in profile format active tile only. And the difference between these two is that if the both in profile format is selected then the table is generated based on the selection in the right hand side. If I deselect this carbon 1s, you can see the table goes away. Although the marker indicates there is a table here and you can see the entry in the annotation history, it's not until I select the carbon 1s that the data are then collected from the selection and then displayed in the table. And this feature is important when we want to see a trend within a data set rather than a specific VAMAS block. If we had rather selected both in profile format active tile only, then the data that is displayed in the table would have come from the data that we see in the active tile. So let's illustrate this by looking at another file that is related to the discussion. That is to say we've got a set of data and these are all carbon 1s that have been measured from graphite. So if I were to create a table and I'll do this on the top VAMAS block so I'll just display this one to make it clear that this is the one from which the table is created. If I create a table that is based on the full width half maximum again then we see the result of the full width half maximum that's gathered from a region on the selected VAMAS block. If I select all of these then the table then fills out to show the full width half maximum for each one of these spectra that were measured at different pass energies. So we can see how the full width half maximum changes if a full slot aperture at the entrance to the hemispherical analyzer at different pass energies. And then there's another aperture that restricts the signal into the hemispherical analyzer so it's narrower, a 27 micron aperture. And this produces a sequence of full width half maxima that are different from when we use a full slot. The signal, however, is much reduced when we use a 27 micron aperture compared to the full slot. So this is a trade-off between sensitivity and resolution, which is also the trade-off that occurs when you go down the pass energies. So from pass energy 160 down to pass energy 5, you improve your full width half maxima, but you're also reducing the signal. 
And we can see that if we first of all move this table over and that will make room for using the height as a measure of the signal. So include height and I'm using both in profile format. So the result of this table will again come from the selection in the right hand side and when I press apply we see the table that is now based on height information for each one of these spectra where it's the peak above this Shirley background that is reporting the intensity in terms of counts per second. So let's now do a comparison. So we can see here that when we improve the energy resolution we also in general we have a reduction in the signal but we don't have a significant reduction in the signal at pass energy 60 to pass energy 80 even though we've halved the pass energy we've improved the energy resolution from 2 to 1 but the signal is roughly the same and similarly if we go from 80 to 40 with the full slot we see a reduction in the peak height but it's not really that significant but we do see an almost halving of the full width half maximum. However, once we go to pass energy 20, we have a, a significant reduction. And when we go to pass energy 10, it's about half of pass energy 20 in peak height. And this is significant. This is telling you something about how the instrument is working, that the height is halving. So this is now an indication that at pass energy 10, we're seeing a peak that is very representative of the carbon S peak. And the energy resolution, well, yes, we do get an improvement. We go from 20 to 10. It's not very significant. And then we go 10 to 5, just a small change. And you can see the similar pattern here, that the full width half maximum using a narrow entrance slit reduces quite nicely to a steady state. So pass energy 20 are about the same in terms of full width half maximum. However, you can see that the result of reducing the pass energy is that you're losing about half the signal each time. So it makes a difference in terms of sensitivity how we collect data. And it makes a difference in terms of peak shape and energy resolution, again, how we collect the data. Full width half maxima are determined by both the entrance aperture and also the pass energy. And the compromise that we have to make is choosing the best signal to noise for the best energy resolution and peak shape. These results are all deriving from the selection in the right hand side. And also they're all coming from a quantification region. However, if we return to the original data where we have a peak model and go to the annotation option then if we select the peak height and use both in profile format active tile because we've got components here then rather than seeing the result from the region we will then see the peak height that is generated by these components because I've said active tile only it doesn't matter whether I've got a selection or not so if I select the carbon 1s we see the option that was generated by both in profile format if I choose to create a table based on both in profile format active tile then I create a table I'll move it so we can see it also and then deselect the carbon 1s you can see that the table that was created using both in profile format that relied on the selection has disappeared whereas because I've got the active tile only it means that the table is now being collected from the VAMAS block that is displayed in the active tile.